Hello and welcome to Newberg Free Library's 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten video. My name is Sarah Scoggin and I'm the Early Childhood Librarian. So what is the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program? Um, it's a program that is used in many libraries across the country uh, and it does run year round. Uh, but we encourage you to get started this summer if you haven't already gotten started. And very simply, as it says on their website, their goal is for you to read a book, any book, to your child with the goal of reading 1,000 before kindergarten. And that might sound like a lot, but one bedtime story a night for three years is already over 1,000 books. Um, and this fits in very well with our summer theme. The summer theme is Imagine Your Story. So uh, fairy tales and folk tales, but really any kind of story to imagine our story. Imagine reading stories throughout life with your child. Uh, so how does it work? Well, you just have to keep track of the books you read. Um, you could just tally how many books you read, um, make a grid or just a tally, or you could write down um, the titles. I made a large version here. Uh, so let's say on June 15th, I read Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, uh, with my little one and then brown bear brown bear what do you see and then um, she wanted chicka chicka boom boom twice more I'm gonna count each time I read it because repetition at this age especially is very important it's all counting as reading um, maybe I finished with bunnykins ABC um, so you could keep it on paper um, it's nice to have a list of all the titles you read um, but I encourage you um, to use the digital reading platform for the summer reading program, which is called Read Squared. Um, to sign up for that if you haven't already done so. Um, because if you put your books in a log on Read Squared, you get a point for each book that you read. And every 100 books you read, you get a digital badge. Um, so uh, I encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description. So why should we read to babies? Why are we reading to infants through toddlers, through preschoolers um, when they're still so small? Um, for very many, many reasons um, to read to little ones. 80% of brain development happens before age three. So it's especially key to start reading early. And it's 90% by age five. So um, take this opportunity to brain build in a way that we'll never have again. Um, I will put a link um, to a video from the Newberg Basics, Five Simple Strategies for Creating a Loving and Learning Environment in Your Home. So um, one of the strategies is read and discuss stories. So not only reading, but interacting, that's the discussing part even if the baby can't have a discussion like an adult has. Um, children who are read to seven days a week are almost a year ahead when it comes to actually getting to school um, than those who are not read to or who are read to seldom. Um, if you read just five minutes a day from birth to age five, that would be 152 hours of reading. If you read 10 minutes a day from birth to age five, it would be 304 hours of reading. And if you read 15 minutes a day from birth to age five, it would be 456 hours. Uh, that's the amount recommended by the site Read Aloud, 15 minutes, every parent, every child, every day is they spoken. So um, they have a list of reasons why it's uh, great to read to little ones for 15 minutes a day, because it's 456 hours of connection from hearing your voice of enjoying the cuddling and closeness, 456 hours of practicing focus and comprehension, of increasing vocabulary, fostering curiosity, reinforcing positive habits and routines, growing empathy, adding knowledge, stirring imagination, establishing pre-reading skills, inspiring curiosity, and sparking a love of learning. So that's a lot of benefit for 15 minutes a day of reading with your child. 
It doesn't have to be 15 minutes straight. It can be throughout the day. Um, just making it a part woven into your life is the best way to do it. Um, you could read in the bathtub with a rubber book. You could read um, in the car with a toddler audiobook. You could read um, a book like this one, an indestructible book um, that's made of non-toxic plastic so it can't be torn. You could read on tummy time. That's a great time for little ones to read who haven't yet started crawling. Basics uh, that I mentioned before that we have the Newberg basics. Um, there was a study done that there are learning gaps that appear by 18 months and two years old, long before children actually get into a classroom. So now that we know why to read to babies, how should we read to babies? Uh, well, the very youngest babies um, do the best with high contrast books because uh, their vision is not very clear except very close and high contrast helps their vision to get more uh, acute. Uh, and then after that to read books with nice, bold, bright colors, um, something like The Very Hungry Caterpillar um, that attracts their eyes. Um, especially books like these that grow with your child so the, the child can first just enjoy looking at the pictures and then start learning uh, the names of words, start looking, learning the days of the week, start counting pieces of fruit um, as they get older. Um, you could have one like this in the garden with Van Gogh where the uh, art is the paintings of Van Gogh and there's a simple story that goes along with it. Um, and it rhymes. Rhyming is good for their pre-reading skills, too. Um, there is a great website called Reading Rockets Babies, and I will put a link down to the description for that. They recommend um, keeping books highly accessible. Uh, we have books in a basket, so a baby could crawl over or just sit nearby um, or toddle over and kind of page through the, the covers are much more appealing than when they're just spine out and you can't really see what the books are. Um, so we keep book baskets uh, scattered throughout our house. So wherever um, the little ones happen to be, um, they can uh, pick a book. And uh, letting the little ones choose is great as soon as they're old enough to start browsing. Uh, there's another site called uh, Zero to Three, and I'll put a link to that down in the description. Uh, it has a terrific list of ways to read to little ones. Um, like they say, don't worry if a child doesn't finish the book. If they are reading this and three pages in, they're squirming and they want to get off your lap, um, that's okay. We don't want to make reading uh, an experience that's negative, like they're being forced to stay and finish. Um, or they might want to turn the pages themselves, even though they turn three, four, or five at a time because they haven't quite got the fine motor. That's good practice, too, even if uh, they're not following the story. Um, maybe they just like one page and they just want to stay on one page for a long time and look at the picture. Um, that's also good. And it gives you an opportunity to run your finger under the text. That's something that's very good to do, um, at least some of the time, to, uh, to underscore that these are the words, this is what you're saying, as opposed to the picture. Um, to sort of take a tour of the book before you start to say, this is the cover, this is read the author and the illustrator, even if they're only a few months old and they don't know it yet, they get used to that being part of the reading experience. Um, also, if their interest does start to wane, you could always uh, sing a book. So um, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, and many other books do have tunes associated with them. So you could try singing it for a double benefit. Um, and finally, I just want to mention Beyond Bedtime Stories, a parent's guide to promoting reading, writing, and other literacy skills from birth to age five. And um, they talk a lot in here about making literacy something that happens throughout the house, in the kitchen, um, reading a recipe out loud while you're doing it, um, in the bathroom, reading a shampoo bottle or making foam letters on the tub or anything that um, is just pre-reading skills. Um, 
you can find literacy everywhere. Um, and one thing that they mentioned is that reading is not passive. Um, when you're child, reading with your child, the child is learning and you can get in the habit of asking questions. So first, simple questions um, like, you know, what is this? Is Oh, this is a little girl. Um, and then more complicated questions. Why do you think the mouse was afraid of the owl? Or what do you think these people should do um, if they have a, a problem, like their, their wagon wheel fell off? What do you think they should do? Um, so it starts getting them thinking about the book um, more than if you just read through the story. So I wish you very happy reading. <laughs>